Cool, today we're going to take a look at applicative functor in Haskell. In particular, we're going to take a look at the applicative functor's sequential application operator, aka asterisk in angle brackets. Let's take a look at the type signature. Okay, so here we have the type signature. Notice that everything is wrapped up in a context f, which is a functor. So we have a step function that goes from a to b, wrapped up in the context f, an initial value of type a wrapped up in the context f, and our output of type b wrapped up in a context f. If you want to see a better explanation of what being in a context means, take a look at the previous video. In any case, here it's kind of easy to see that the way this all works in the implementation is that we need to apply our step function here to go from the initial value to the final value. So somehow we can imagine that what happens here is that this value of type A here is first extracted. This function from A to B is extracted from the context too. Then we can apply A to this step function to produce a B and then wrap that B up in the same context f to produce the output. So in the previous two videos, we covered function application and fmap. Let's see them compared to the new applicative functors sequential application operator. Now, if you remember from two videos ago, we saw that the function application operator is just uh, taking a value of type A and applying it to the step function to produce the output of type B, which is exactly what we need. In terms of fmap, we have a similar behavior. We just need to unwrap somehow the value of type A from this functorial context F. And as we have seen in the previous video, the way this step function is applied depends on the semantics of the context F. So in other words, we can say we have one discriminator here on how the step function is applied. In the case of applicative functors sequential application, we have the same situation as in fmap on this side, but we have another discriminator here on the left, which means that the way the value of type A is applied to the step function depends not only on one discriminator, but on two discriminators. Here's an example using maybe. So since maybe has two value constructors, just and nothing, and we have two discriminators, we can expect to have four combinations. So in the first case, we have a function plus one wrapped up in a just and a value one wrapped up in a just. The semantics of maybe for applicative functor say that in this case, we go on and we apply plus one to the value one and we return just two. In the second case, we have a value plus one wrapped in a just and as a value, we have a nothing. In this case, the semantics of maybe make it so that we get out a nothing. In the third case, we have, we don't have a function actually because it's a nothing, but we have a value on the right, just one. And here again, we get a nothing out. In a fourth case, probably not surprising, we get nothing out again. So the idea in maybe is that if there's a nothing on either side, of the operator, we get out of a nothing no matter what. If we have both justs, then the step function is applied to the value wrapped in the right just, and we return the result wrapped in a just again. Got it. That is the applicative functor's sequential application. Any sort of feedback is welcome, so feel free to hit me anywhere. I'll see you next time.